Tim. It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You saw up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Friday, June 10th. And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So what is happening on this fabulous Friday? We've got current news from around the world. We have a word study about the Wednesday message. And of course, let's testify with Thule from Australia. All right, everyone, how are you doing? It is Friday. Yes, thank God it's Friday. We're ready for the weekend. And I'm always looking forward to the weekend. Not because there's something exciting happen. It's just that time to decompress all the things that have happened. Kind of reflect on the week. Do some other things that you need to do. Like even for me, I'll be lecturing tonight. So I'm really, really happy about that. Also, I'm working on this um, lecture for the CU Saturday. So I will post that on Patreon tonight too. But... I'm just really, really in a great mood. So I hope that you guys, too, are are uh, in a great mood also. And I really hope that uh, you guys will spend a very, very good weekend. But super thankful for all of you there. Starting off your weekend, kicking off here on the Morning Star Drive together. So everyone, keep liking and commenting. We got to build this English community in Providence. And I want to hear from you guys and see how you're doing. Post your song requests, questions, stories, whatever it is. I would love to hear it in the comment section. And... Uh, we, we're getting a lot more uh, comments and comments on comments too, so I'm super happy about that also. Not because, uh, not just because it's commenting on my channel, it's because we're building a community more than anything else, all right? So I want to, you know, I'm going to share about something, this interesting conversation I had because uh, I was talking to someone about it. Uh, this, this conversation was coming up uh, this week. I was talking to uh, one of the leaders about it. And then what happened this morning Right. What happened this morning is very cool because it has to do with this week's messages. Uh, you know, I woke up for pre-dawn and of course you close your eyes for a second and pre-dawn is over. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, you know, you know that feeling, right? The alarm goes off. You check your clock you're like, oh, all right, time for pre-dawn. You close your eyes for a second. And all of a sudden I woke up at like uh, it was like six, like six thirty a.m. Like out of nowhere kind of thing. So I was like, oh my gosh, I just, I missed it. So what I did was I, I, I you know, I, I got ready and I said, you know what, no matter what, I got to pray. So, you know, I got on my, you know, I, I, I got my, you know, I got all dressed and everything else. I got on my knees and started to pray. And uh, while I was praying, uh, this interesting thing happened where I got this inspiration, right? And the inspiration that came out, and I was sharing this with another leader too, uh, it, it was, uh imagine like take a look at your church everyone look, think about your church right now okay everyone look at your church right now and let's be honest with ourselves and be realistic has your church exploded like is it like this big church and you're like wow this is the church i've always wanted or is it like wow it's been a struggle and you know it hasn't been that you know it hasn't been like perfect there's some good points and stuff but we haven't really exploded right like even outside of korea uh, I don't know how many churches are over a thousand, except for Korea, even Japan and and Taiwan. No, none of the churches there are over a thousand. So if that's the case, imagine churches outside of the big three, outside of Korea, Japan, and, and Taiwan. How many churches are even close to a thousand? The answer is no. So imagine you're thinking to yourself, God, you know, when are we going to get to a church of like a thousand people? Okay, just a, and a thousand is a lot if you think about the the state of your church right now. For most churches, that's going to be like 10 times the size, right? It'll be anywhere from 5 to 10 times the size, okay? And you'd be thinking to yourself like, oh, by that time we'll own a church, you know, like this, and it'll be so fun. All these are different things. But imagine God straight up tells you and he says, oh, and you're like, God, when will this happen? And this is kind of the inspiration I got while I was doing the pre-dawn. Well, it wasn't pre-dawn because it was like late. But the inspiration was, what if it was 20 years later? I want you to think about that. How would you feel? How would you honestly feel if God straight up is like, oh, yeah, 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 that's, it's going to happen. Yeah, it'll happen. Come on. It's God's will. So it's going to happen. And you're like, all right, God, so when's it going to happen? Yeah, you're looking at about 20 years. Like, 
How many of you would be like, oh my goodness, the amount of suffering we have to go through for another 20 years just to get to that point? You got to think about this, right? And when I got this inspiration from the Holy Spirit, I was like, dang, 20 years. And uh, when I started to think about this more deeply in my prayer, like the question came to mind is like, wait a second. 20 years. Now, why would I struggle and like, why would I feel like so much suffering because I'd have to wait 20 years for the church to grow to that size? Like, why is that such a struggling thing for me? And I realized in my head and, you know, I was having this conversation later on after, you know, you know, uh, after, you know, had breakfast and stuff. Uh, The conversation was, you know, I think our thinking is wrong because we're basing my well-being and how great or fun or how amazing things are dependent upon whether our church reaches a thousand or not. You know what I mean? Like it, we're, we're basing it on a number. And because of that, we're always unhappy. Well, church is not, oh, well, the church is not growing. Oh, the church is not, and the church is. And we become really, really unhappy and we feel like we're suffering and we're going through these terrible things because we haven't reached like a certain number or a goal. And I thought to myself is, well, let's look at Sunseam's life too. When you look at Sunseam's life, it's very, very interesting because when you look at Sunseam's first, like when he's when he's up in the mountains and he's praying and he's going through massive suffering, right? So we learned this during the the, the Alpha Alpha Day week. And he went through intense suffering. And then after 21 years, he can finally go out and preach the gospel after 21 years of suffering. Right. And then even after he comes out, he still goes up into the mountain. He's still suffering. And then, you know, the people that he evangelizes live with him in the mountains and they leave him. And then he goes and builds a small church and then they leave him. And slowly, but surely it's taking years and years and years um, before it finally kind of reaches a certain point, like, wow, it's finally grown. We're not, we're not in this abandoned building. We're not in this like three by, you know, three meters squared, uh, how or room that we're having church in, you know what I mean? And then on top of that, like 1999 comes more slander. And then you have like him, you know, having the, uh, going to China and 10 months of, of, uh, like, Uh, what do you call it, like torture. And then after that, he goes to trial, 10 years in prison. And now it's like slandering. And you're kind of like going, what the heck? What keeps you going? Because wouldn't you ever think to yourself, well, you know, God, like when is it, when are we going to, when are things going to turn out better? And imagine God says to you, oh, 40, like we're in the 44th year. And this is Matt, you know, this is another slander case. In the 44th year, like, can you imagine if you were sons to him? And the question would be, if it was us and someone said, God said 20 years, how many people would be discouraged? How many people would not be motivated to run? How many people would not be, would be de- like demotivated? I don't want to go to church. I don't want to get for pre Man, I'm going to do it for another 20 years. You, you know, if you think about that, a lot of people would think that way. And that made me think during the pre I was like, wait a second, then what keeps on seem going? What keeps him going, right? What makes him continue? And my realization at that point is, is because for him, it was never about the final result that that's going to determine how he is or that determines how great his faith is. And in the end, you know, it's for him, he kind of gave the answer this week. It's from the Sunday message. And he just says, God's, God's telling you guys, you don't need to do anything special. You just need to live with him every day. Live loving him every day. That is the greatest thing you can do. And I thought to myself is, imagine if that was the goal. If that was what we considered great faith is, how is your daily life? Not basing it on how many pre you went to. Not basing it on how many people you evangelized. Not basing it on how big your church is. You know, what if it's based on just you and your love with God? And that is the ultimate thing then even when difficulties come, it's all about me and God. Even when difficulties come, it's okay because it's about, God, what do I do in this situation? God, you've always helped me. It's And, and if you think about it, it's always been like this. It has, right? Look at Jesus. Jesus had, what, 11 disciples or 12 and one betrayed him and then he had a few others and then, you know what I mean? Like he didn't do like, a, when you look at result-wise, he didn't do like a lot. 
His disciples did more than him. But what is the message that he's giving? The message, the ultimate message, the purpose of creation is to become the counterpart of love with God. That was the ultimate thing. Ultimate thing that he's teaching is this love relationship with God. And when I thought about that for this week, I was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. And that would change the way I would actually perceive how my life with God is like. It's not based on the suffering. It's not based on what is good or what is bad. It's just based on what I'm going through in life and how I'm living my relationship with God every day. That daily thing becomes the most important thing. So, yeah, I, it was really interesting because this morning I had, I, you know, I, I missed pre-dawn. I, I overslept just by blinking my eyes. And I was like, God, what do I do? And it was kind of that feeling of, is my day destroyed because I didn't go to pre dawn? Really? Is that going to be the basis of how good my faith is? Or does it account for the entire day? What did I do with God? Does this, does this give me a new opportunity to cling even closer to God? So, you know, that's why even right now, right before I started my, uh, right before I started my podcast, I pray. And it was, it was so intense. Like I, I just prayed sincerely and then I just felt this hot fire in my heart when I called out to God and I told, I love you. I truly love you. I just felt it in my heart. I'm like, wow, this is what it is. And this is what we're going to remember. No matter how big something is, people don't remember that last moment. They remember that as the cap of all the things I went through. You talk about all the difficulties, all the stories that happened before and then when it's, fulfilled you're like wow that's such an amazing story it worked out but you don't really talk about when it works out you talk about what happened to get to that point that makes the story so amazing right that's what makes it like an amazing testimony an amazing testimony is when you have all these difficulties but at the very end it works out but you don't even talk about the end part like that end part's not talk about the most the the ending is talk about the least it's all about the story and i think this is our life in this history it's the story of our daily life of faith right so that's kind of what my realization was. And if you guys have any comments about that too, go ahead and write in the comments below because, yeah, for me, it was a really powerful, uh, powerful realization for me, right? So just write, write a comment if you if you have any thoughts about that too. Uh, also, uh, you know, yesterday, did you guys check out the new video on Espresso with Sky? It's three stages of demon possession. Yeah, I know. How to get demon possessed. I know, it might sound a little crazy, but uh, go ahead and watch that. It's a great uh, pre-lesson, pre-Satan principle lesson uh, for a lot of people for their newcomers and such. They can take a look at that also, all right? All right, so I um, let's get into some music from member artists from around the world, and I hope you guys are really going to enjoy this on this relaxing Friday. Uh, we're going to start off with Die Wings from Korea, and one of their older songs, it was their, it's, it's not their older song, but it's the, the, the song that was released on 316, and that song is uh, called We're Going Up Now. And then after that, we have PGY from the Paper Music Associates in Korea with Dear God of the Universe. And then we'll end things off with Renee Lai from Taiwan uh, with a cover from A Star Is Born soundtrack with Always Remember Us This Way. <laughs> Nobody can describe me, I know who I am 정해지는 명 따윈 믿지 않아, I don't care All limitations are set by yourself 내 길이 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 전에 오늘 정해져 있는 길이라고 누가 말했어, yo, uh-oh 어느 길을 가든 내가 선택하면 가는 거지 앞에 너희 누가 지켜 죽네 나 배우고 알았으니 자유로 미 벅차오르니, yeah 날개가 도전한 내 암페이어 거기에 도착해 내 덕분에 I can't help loving myself 나만의 diamonds and 나만의 crown One who wants to wear the crown Wear the crown, then wear the crown We're going up now Keep going, that's right Keep moving, that's right You ready? Be strong We're going up now Keep going, that's right Keep moving, that's right You ready? Be strong 
sky burning in your eyes you look at me and babe i wanna catch on fire it's buried in my soul like california gold you found the light in me that i couldn't find so when i'm all choked up but i can't find the words every time we say goodbye baby it hurts when the sun goes down and the band won't play I'll always remember us this way Lovers in the night Always trying to ride We don't know how to rhyme But then we try Renee Lai from Taiwan with Always Remember Us This Way from A Star Is Born soundtrack. Uh, before that was PGY from PMA in Korea with Dear God of the Universe. And of course, featured artist of the day, that is Dio Wings from Korea with We're Going Up Now. All right, so let's get into some news going on around the world. What is happening? And of course, all of us, we need to know that the top three reasons. What are the three reasons Sunseam tells us to watch the world news? Number one, to see what God is doing. Number two, to see what we need to report and pray about. And last but not least, to comfort God's heart. So let's start off with what's going on with the Russia-Ukraine crisis over the last 24 hours. What just happened? Two Britons, Aidan Aslin and Sean Pinner, are sentenced to death alongside Moroccan national Saudun Brahim. They appeared in a court in the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic, held by pro-Russian rebels and not internationally recognized. Both British men were serving members of Ukraine's armed forces. Downing Street says it's deeply concerned and prisoners uh, of war shouldn't be exploited for political purposes. The UK government is pressuring Moscow over the death sentences handed to two Britons captured by Russian forces, a minister says. Uh, also on the front line, uh, there's no let-up in the battle for the eastern Ukrainian city of Severodonetsk with street fighting and heavy artillery fire. President uh, Zelensky says the fate of his country's eastern Donbass region may be decided in the battle. Meanwhile, the UN's chief, Antonio Guterres, warns the war's impact on the world's food security, energy, and finance is severe. 
Uh, in other news, uh, Ukraine, su- they say that Ukraine is suffering about 100 to 200 daily military casualties. Uh, Ukrainian military casualties are now between 100 and 200 a day. According to a senior advisor to President Zelensky, the highest estimated total to have been made in public so far. Speaking to BBC World's uh, World Services News Hour program, uh, Mikhailo Podolyak says one of the main reasons for the high casualty numbers is a lack of parity between Ukrainian and Russian military capabilities. According to Zelensky's advisors, Ukraine needs hundreds, not a handful, of the most powerful artillery systems the West can provide. He tells the BBC that Ukraine needs as many as 300, uh, 300 launch rocket systems to be able to reach parity with Russia's firepower and liberate occupied territory. Now, Podolyak added that um, until Russia suffers a serious military defeat, no no form of dialogue will be possible, and they will continue to try to take parts of the country. So uh, that is kind of the the updates going on over there in the Russia-Ukraine crisis. In other parts of the world, um, very, very serious one here, La Luz del Mundo megachurch leader, right? So the the leader of this megachurch is jailed for child sex abuse. So his name is Nason Joaquin Garcia, the leader of the La Luz del Mundo megachurch, has been sentenced in a Los Angeles court to 16 years and eight months in prison. Garcia, 53 years old, pleaded guilty last week to three counts of sexually abusing girls from his congregation. Yes, he pleaded guilty to it. So this trial is done. Uh, It didn't even go to trial because he pled guilty. And his plea deal means his sentence is considerably shorter than the life imprisonment he could have faced had he been found guilty in the trial. Uh, To his followers... uh, uh, Garcia is known as the Apostle. His church shared a statement in Spanish on Twitter in which it expresses its continued support for the Apostle of Jesus Christ and praised his integrity, his conduct, and his work. The statement alleges that the evidence Garcia had been fabricated uh, and that he accepted the plea deal as the best way to protect the church and his family. And um, uh, he, he's, it's basically a very fundamentalist Christian organization and La Luz del Mundo, meaning the light of the world, and that's the name of the church, was founded in Mexico in 1926 by Garcia's grandfather. Uh, and the church's influence has spread in recent years and is strong in parts of California that have large Hispanic populations, which Garcia often visited. Now, he was arrested at Los Angeles Airport in 2019 along with two of his female followers as they arrived by private jet. And the church says it has baptized more than 5 million people worldwide, but independently verified numbers of its followers are hard to come by. So people are a little bit surprised because of the guilty plea. Because he's been facing 19 charges, right? But on Friday, three days before his trial was due to start, he pleaded guilty to two counts of forcible oral copulation involving minors and one count of a lewd act upon a child who was 15 years old. And the unexpected plea deal means that his trial has been dropped and the church leader will not face other charges, including raping and trafficking girls from his congregation, which he has denied. Now, some of those who have accused Garcia of abusing them said the plea deal set a dangerous precedent. Uh, so former members of the church uh, who filed the federal federal civil lawsuit against uh, the church alleges uh, that it promotes an institutionalized culture of abuse and told journalists at a news conference uh, they were disappointed that there was no day in court and because they wanted the court to go on so that people could hear what this man represented in society and what we need to understand. So uh, Attorney General uh, in California said Friday's conviction sent a clear message that sexual exploitation is never acceptable in California. And of course, as a leader of this church, Garcia used his power to take advantage of children and he relied on those around him to groom congregants for the purposes of sexual assault. And today's conviction, uh, basically the conviction can never undo the harm, but it will protect future generations, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. There were other followers with him that were arrested. Two followers were arrested with him in 2019 have also pleaded guilty, right? So uh, the two women, one was 27, on Friday admitted assault likely to cause great bodily uh, injury. And she had been Garcia's assistant before their arrest. And there was another woman uh, already pleaded guilty in 2020 to four counts involving the sexual abuse of minors. And she had been expected to testify against Garcia. So uh, we see that. You know, even his assistants were doing the exact same. One of the assistants was, you know, sexual abuse of minors, and she was going to testify against Garcia, and she pleaded guilty also. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. And, you know, this, this, I was really hesitant actually to put this up. To be, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I was very hesitant because it kind of hits too close to home. And, uh, 
because it's such an emotional thing, you know, what there could be two things that can happen. Number one is, you know, we can all of a sudden think, oh, it's the same thing that happens, something, this, this, and this, oh, oh, this is probably false, right? And then another thing that can happen is um, we could, you know, it could just be too shocking that it brings us such a negative feeling. But the the final feeling that I had what it had was, you know, this is a condition of what is happening in the world right now. But for us, as people who should be brides of this history, we're not the ones who judge and say that's right or what what's wrong. For us, we have to see every situation as a, alone, as a, as a standalone, and we can only look at them. Uh, as what the factual facts are. What what are the facts? What really happened there? And, um, you know, it, it's something that we have to think about. Uh, we're going to see more of these things and we can't shy away from them, but we have to be those that understand like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, some of them are fake, but not all of them are. And not all of them are, are real, right? And we have to be those that are really understanding from the perspective and the point of view that, yeah, we go by what is truth, right? And if it happened and these people pled guilty and another person pled guilty for these different things, it's just a really sad thing to see in God's eyes because it taints God's name more than anything else. And it sets up, uh, you know, like even more terrible precedents for the future where everyone's going to think, oh, that's happened before, so this must be true kind of thing. So we have to be the ones that become more reasonable and we have to be the ones uh, that is able to handle these things really well, right? So that's why I, I posted this up too uh, because it's something that we should think about. Uh, last but not least, another problem with another another thing, another unfortunate incident in another church in Nigeria, right? So right now, Nigerian forces are still searching for gunmen who killed 50 people in a church attack. So there's no one claiming responsibility for the killings, uh, and there's still a number of wounded. Uh, it's still unclear how many are, unwounded, uh, are wounded, right? So the gunmen killed 50 people at a Catholic church in southwestern Nigeria, opening fire on worshipers both inside and outside the building in a coordinated attack before escaping the scene. Although Nigerian security forces have not yet identified who carried out Sunday's attack on St. Francis Church in the town of Owo in relatively peaceful Ondo State, analysts suggested they came from elsewhere in the Af West African nation, which is plagued by violence from various armed groups, kidnappers, and extremists. No one has claimed responsibility for the church killings in which children were among the dead and the gunmen detonated some kind of explosive. Scores of people were wounded, although an exact number was not released by overwhelmed hospital workers. A state lawmaker from the region said the death toll was at least 50 and scores of people are wounded. Although an exact number was not released by overwhelmed hospital workers. State police commissioner said security forces, including the military, pursued the attackers, but unfortunately they could not catch up with them. Uh, the vice president and other government uh, officials visited the church Monday uh, and a day earlier he pledged that he will keep standing against evil and Nigeria will win. Nigeria, which is Africa's most populous country with 206 million people, has grappled for over a decade with an insurgency in the northeast by Islamic extremist rebels of Boko Haram and its offshoot, the Islamic State West Africa province. The extremists, who have killed more than 35,000 people by a UN count, are fighting to establish Sharia law and to stop Western education. Now, this attack, when did it happen? The attack came as worshippers were celebrating the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, and um, the, the bishop said some gunmen entered the church while others stayed outside to shoot anyone who fled. And the priest celebrating the Mass was giving the blessing to end the service when the attackers came in and opened fire. And he said the church uh, has three entrances and the main entrance was said to have been locked, making it difficult for many to escape. So... You know, they're really, really unfortunate, these two two news items coming out from, from churches. But I hope it's something that we can really pray about, too. And, you know, they, you know even if they, they're coming from the former faith, which means they're God's children. So you have to think about it from that perspective, how God feels when his children are doing this, right? Whether it's in the first one uh, about, uh, you know, about the accusation, you know, pleading guilty to sexual acts with minors. Or this one where people are going and shooting in, their, in, in, the, in the churches. So... Yeah, there's a lot of things to pray about. It's really sickening, too, to hear about this news, but it's happening in the world right now, and especially at this terrible time, okay? So that is the top three news around the world, and hope it's something that you guys can really, really pray about sincerely, all right? So let's move into some news going on around sports. What are the top three news in sports right now? Not a lot of sports are going on right now because, you know, a lot of them have ended, like, 
NFL has ended, like that's like two months ago. Uh, NHL uh, is in their uh, Western Eastern Conference final still going on. And the NBA right now, it's the final. So you only, you're only getting a game like once every two to three uh, days, right? So last night, it was the Boston Celtics defeating the Golden State Warriors at home, 116 to 100. Boston now leads the series 2 to 1. Jason Tatum with 26 points, 6 rebounds, 9 assists in an amazing, awesome effort. And Curry with 31 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists in a losing effort. Uh, in golf, and once again, this LIV golf tournament, this new golf tour is just making headlines everywhere. Uh, and officially, the PGA Tour has suspended all players that are taking part in the first LIV golf tournament just outside of London. 17 members competing in the event are all suspended from the PGA. And players who resigned their membership before starting the LIV golf tournament uh, golf event are also no longer eligible to compete in the Tour or the President's Cup. And this was announced 30 minutes after the opening tee shots in the LIV event. Uh, the golf C the LIV golf CEO is Greg Norman, former world number one from Australia, and he stated that the new circuit was prepared to help players fight the PGA Tour's position in court, and some players are ready to fight in a legal battle too. So what makes the LIV tournament different? Number one is uh, it's only 54 holes. There's a team format. There is no cuts like the PGA. $25 million purse with $4 million to the winner, and all the way to last place gets $120,000. Top players get signing bonuses of over $100 million already. I believe there's already two players. One got 200 Dustin Johnson got 125 And uh, what was, who was the other guy? Bryce DeChambeau got like $135 million just just to as a signing bonus, which is crazy, right? Uh, the big controversy in this uh, tour is the LIV tour is funded by Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, controlled by the Crown Prince, who has been accused of human rights violations. And this is why there's such a big controversy over this. Uh, last but not least, in NFL contracts, Elliot Rams signing, another big signing. Cooper Cup, number, you know, he was an MVP in the Super Bowl. Uh, signs a new year, a new three-year, eighty million dollar deal, seventy-five million guaranteed. It's the highest guarantee for all wide receivers. So now, look who's they. This one team has signed um, Cooper Cup to three years, eighty million. Aaron Donald three years, ninety-five million. Matthew Stafford four years, one hundred sixty million. Bobby Wagner three years, fifty million, and Allen Robinson three years and forty-six million. So they have spent a ton of money, and they are the reigning Super Bowl champions. All right, so that is, and that just shows to you that why the NFL is the number one uh, sport in all of North America. Okay, so that is the top news in sports and news from around the world. Hope you guys really enjoy that. Give you new insight on what's happening around the world. That means we're gonna get into the golden time. Yes, it is the golden time. And someone did suggest I should come up with some music for the golden time i'm not sure what music you guys can suggest or send me some music that i can use as the golden time chime right and uh we're gonna start off um this time of praise and worship we're gonna start off with my lord who shines in the word and that is just an amen to the title and then pray at all times which is um pray at all times and then we'll end things off with i write a letter on the clouds all right so as one body of the morning star drive let's spend this time giving praise honor and glory to the holy trinity <laughs> Within the word, speaking with the power of the spirit, ruling justly over all the world. He is only love. Now the Lord has come, I'll celebrate, bringing judgment through the word of truth. He's come to this world that's in the sky. Will they ever?
fulfill heaven's purpose of creation here and as he makes heaven on the earth we are overjoyed my lord always judges righteously speaking only words of truth and love we're rewarded as much as we do i will follow I'm 
upon you quickly.
And that was I Write a Letter on the Clouds. Amen. Uh, before that was Pray at All Times. And of course, My Lord Who Shines in the Word. I hope you guys enjoyed that time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. All right, everyone. So let's get into the word study for today. And of course, every single Friday, we do a word study on the Wednesday message. Wednesday message title was Same as Sunday, Realize What God Has Done. And I'm hoping that a lot of you uh, are looking at the different things that are happening in your life and realizing what God is doing now so you can realize Realize what God is doing later. And of course, another really good point was, if you realize what God has done, then you, you'll you realize God was actually with you, right? So let's get into the Wednesday message. A lot of good tidbits and things that, um, that came in. Uh, the point is, realize what, uh, realize why we did what we did in the past, right? And then you're going to realize how you're taking action right now. And there are so many things we need to realize about what we've already done, right? And this is something that I think is an important thing, especially when it comes to our reflection on what we've done during the day, what we've done in our lives. Like something we talked about, realize why God has brought you into this history. And that's a really, really important point. Reflect on the past, which means that you could reflect every year, but there's a lot of things to remember in the entire year. And this is kind of why it's very good for us uh, when we pray at night to reflect on the day and see the things that God really, really helped you with. There are tons of things, right? So we don't want to let any of our actions or any things we've done each and every day just pass by not realizing that God took action through us. Right, We have to live knowing how much God was with us, that even in the present right now, right, even in real time, we have to realize. Right, we, and, and that's a great point I think that a lot of us have to take into heart is it's not so much about just realizing. It's about trying to realize. Right, That's a big point is putting in the effort to actually try to realize. You know, some things, of course, in like in that moment, it's undeniable and you'll realize it immediately. Wow, God really helped me at that time, right? And there are some things that you'll only realize when you actually like deliberately and consciously try to realize what just happened, right? And there's, and Sussie was even saying that there's other things that you won't even realize until after listening to the word really deeply, praying deeply, like, oh, that's what actually happened. And you see that there are some things that are so hidden and mysterious that you're not going to realize until later, until you hear the word, until you pray deeply and everything just kind of falls into place inside your mind. And that's why it's kind of called a realization. It's like everything fits together and it works, right? So we have to be those. If we want to realize really well, uh, one of the one thing that Sansim did say was you got to empty yourself and not think about like, don't try to realize using your own mind, like your own thoughts and what you want, right? Because you could be forcing a realization that's not even real, right? We have to empty ourselves and we have to realize to that, that, that high level, to that perfect extent, realize properly. We have to empty ourselves and realize to that level of perfection. And then this is the point where we realize perfectly, which means that there are realizations we have that are not at the highest level. They're not perfect level. It's realized only at our own level with our own thoughts. So I, I hope that all of us here uh, uh, can understand what it means for us to realize to that to that extent. And there's one thing that I, I think that uh, Sunseem said that made me think really deeply too is and why we have to share our testimonies and even why the Sunday editions are so big if you don't fully realize why you came into this history, why did God choose you? Then you are not going to love God and live in providence until the end. That's how big it is. Until you realize to that point, then you're not going to love God and live in providence until the end. You have to realize to that point. Fully realize why were you chosen? Why are you here in this history? And I think one of the points that Sunsi made was so pertinent to everyone because I think everyone, a lot of people will struggle with this once or twice in their life, even more than that, maybe 10 times, even while living in this history. You just kind of think to yourself, you're not really doing much in Providence. Or you're working hard, but you're just kind of working. There's no conviction, right? And you don't really, like, even though you're running hard, you still don't think you're doing well. 
And the answer came, and I thought it was, it was just so powerful. And the answer is, if you are listening to God's word, right? Believing in God and loving Him in your daily life, then you're doing well. That's the key. We all think to ourselves, oh, am I really doing well? Is it really like this? Is it... Oh. You're doing well if you're listening to God. So then number one, are we listening to God's word? Absolutely. Right? We're listening to God's word. We're doing word studies. We're, we're thinking about it. And then believing in God, we do. Loving Him in our life of faith, yeah, we pray, we try our best, we're trying to love God even more. Then we're doing well. And, and that's something that I think we have to keep in mind. Right? We have to keep that in mind. Understanding the value of each and every person in this history is something that everyone has to realize. Because sometimes we think people aren't doing anything in this history, but every person is necessary. Every person is valuable. Think about it. Does that mean the only people doing well are the ones that are actually like directly contributing to church? Directly? Meaning they're out there running an event. Those are the ones that are doing well? No way, because that means you're you're saying 10% of your church is doing well. What about the people who give money? That's was it, well, maybe that too. Then even if it's tithing, then then now you're looking at like 80 to 90% of your church that's doing well, that's contributing, right? Everyone has a value. Everyone is necessary. Everyone has a mission. And we are absolutely needed in each of our areas. And the issue that might come up uh, that Sassim talks about later is what is your respective area, right? What is your individuality? What is the thing that you can do before God and the Holy Spirit? And this is why we have to realize, why did God choose you? Why are you in this history? Now, this might sound negative, like, <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> you know, it sounds kind of funny, like, why are you here? And it sounds like, oh, it's so negative, like they're saying that you don't belong. But what God is saying is, realize, why are you here? It's not gonna, it's not something that takes a minute or five, not even some people, it's gonna take years to figure it out. And they're trying different things out. But we have to realize why did God choose you to come into this history? Why did he choose you? And you know, imagine you're SS and you're like, oh, I don't know. Well, you know, SS are still developing. They're still, you know, they're still not mature yet, obviously, right? Even campus two, they're still not mature. They're at the end of mature, like getting towards maturity. But they're not going to know either. The individual talents, right? What is your individual talent? But guess what? Talents take time to develop too. They do. You're not going to know the talent of someone when they're Milky Way. You're not even going to know the fully developed talent of an SS or a campus member. It's going to take time. If, you're in, if, you, if God is saying, let your individual talents come out, well, first you need to build your talents. What's your specialty, right? You don't become a king of individuality just because someone says, oh, you're good at this. No, because sometimes you're not good at it, but you need to develop it more than anything else. When Satsim says, oh, focus on this, well, sometimes it's because that is the thing that you know God wants from you, and all you have to do is work hard in that thing. It doesn't mean you're the king yet in that area. And I love that bonsai tree story that it's been there for four years. And then finally he begins to like cut away and prune the leafy leaves. And, and all of a sudden the shape and the trunk of that bonsai tree is revealed. And he's like, whoa, right? And he called it the realized pine tree. And he says in the same way too, there's a lot of things that cover your talents. There are a lot of things that cover your talents. It covers your shape, the beauty of you. And it's about cutting out these fundamental problems of ourself. And I think that's a big thing. The fundamental problem of self is sometimes character, right? Sometimes it's a character issue. Like, you know, you get too angry or too excited, too emotional. You know, there's like, there's a lot of different things when it comes to character, right? Too, you know, too lazy or, right, too easily swayed. There's just tons of things for character. But it's not just character. Pruning, uh, you know, solving the fundamental problems of self also includes mentality. How you think of yourself. Like, remember what I talked about at the very beginning of this program? My realization from the pre-dawn? Sometimes, even that in itself, you think about that as, oh yeah, so what happened there? Well, it's about having the wrong perspective on something. 
I think my faith is based on how many people I evangelize. But God's like, since when is it based on how many people, like a number? Since when is it based on that? And the problem, the fundamental problem there is, is the way we think. There's multiple different ways it stops us, right? From That covers up our shape. We need to find our shape. We need to find what we truly are. And cutting away those things bit by bit, we eventually realize, uh, we eventually realize our, our the value of self. But also on top of it, God will acknowledge us as a king of that individual quality. Right. This is why we have to realize about ourselves. Make yourself, fix yourself, get rid of the those the wrong thinking, the wrong perspectives, the wrong mentality, the wrong personality and character. The one cool thing that Sunsim said is, once you do that, then what you already have will be revealed, which means it's already there. Realize value and quality of self. And you're going to realize it through your unique individual characteristic. So he had that tree for four years, if you think about that. Four years didn't take any, didn't do anything. But then later he realizes from it. Realizing, why did the Holy Spirit make me buy this? That's this week's message, right? Why did, you, why did I buy that? That's the intro. Second thing is pruning it to see how beautiful it really is. And the same thing with us too. This week, there's a lot of things God helped us with in the past or God's making us do right now for the next step. Prune and find the beauty inside. What's the talent? You know, you, no one's ordinary. Then you're going to figure out what God's will towards you is. And then you're going to realize what God did in the past to make you who you are today. And this becomes such a different story. Right? We have to realize about ourselves. We got to realize what God has done for us. We got to prune away those things. You know, we're realizing more and more, wow, you know, when, when you start to see these things come into fruition, you're going to realize that God and the Holy Spirit, they were always next to us. But one interesting thing that Sunsim said was, they're always next to us, but they speak to us when we realize. That's a powerful statement. They're always there, but why don't you speak? It's when you realize, when something sparks in your mind, you, you realize, and that's when God and the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And this is when you start to realize, oh my goodness, God was with me. So I, I hope that, you know, listening to that Wednesday, it was such a powerful message. God, they're always with us. They're always loving us. And it doesn't matter if it's the past, present, future, whatever. This Knowing this, you will, will live just realizing that in itself. Remember what Sansi said? Biggest realization is that God was always with me and He helped me. If you just realize that one thing, you're having an amazing life of faith, a life of, 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 of thanksgiving, a, a gratifying life, a satisfying life, just realizing that one thing. And this is why, you know, I, I like this one point because it has to do with this podcast when Sunseem said, pay attention and try to realize what God is doing in the world. And this is kind of why I like my second section of um, world news. You get to see what is happening. Right? When you realize you're refreshed, when you realize your mind opens up, when you realize you gain more energy. But if you don't try to, if you have no interest in realizing, then... Things that should should realize right now is gonna take 10, 20 years. But if you try, we gotta we gotta attempt, deliberately try to realize, and this is when it automatically comes. So I hope, you know, this is it was such a short message, but such a powerful message. And, and we have to think about it to ourselves. And Sunsi was like, remember the word. Don't let your thoughts be idle. Remember the word. Ask God. Ask the Holy Spirit each moment. Ask why they're doing things in this. Ask why they're doing that. God, Holy Spirit, why are you making me look at this pine tree again? Right. In that moment, he sees a pine tree for four years and says, God, what's the Holy Spirit, what do you want me to see this for? Right? Why are you doing that? Why did you make me do this? And you'll realize even more. So I hope that all of us here too can, can realize from the Wednesday message really powerfully. There's just so many things that comes from it. And uh, I hope that, um, you know, we don't let, the things that God did for us and God helped us with, don't let them pass by. 
We have to listen to the word deeply, pray deeply, realize deeply, perfectly, right? It can't be done with our own thoughts. Empty ourselves and realize deeply and properly. Read the word. Pray deeply and you'll, you'll realize even more things, okay? And I, I hope that once we, and that second point I loved is don't, just don't think you're not doing anything in Providence. It means you have the wrong mindset. If you think that it's only people who evangelize are doing something in Providence, the mindset's wrong, right? And I, I think that was a really powerful point for Sunsi brought up because many people think like that, okay? So uh, that is the word study for today and I hope it's something that you guys enjoyed uh, just as much as I do and I hope that uh, we can really get ourselves to uh, put the words into action this week. But, you know, realizing about yourself, you know, getting rid of your uh, fundamental problems is not a, like a one-week thing. It's going to take time. But once we get rid of those things, we'll reach a new level, okay? All right, so that is the end of uh, the word study for today. And I hope that you guys really, really enjoyed that, uh, which leads us into the song of choice for today, which every Friday is a musical Friday. And I chose this Broadway musical from Disney. And this is one that I haven't seen yet. I, I haven't seen much of it. I have seen the animated movie for it, but uh, it's the Disney Broadway musical called Tangled. I think it's about Rapunzel, right? And um, this song is called I See the Light. So I hope you guys will really enjoy this. Days watching from the windows, all those years outside looking in, all that time never even knowing just how blind I've been. Now I'm here blinking in the starlight. Now I'm here suddenly. And wow, what 
uh, that is such a, a very good Disney song. It just you, it just oozes Disney from it. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I hope you that was from the Disney Broadway musical Tangled, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, song of choice for this musical Friday, and I know that a lot of you look forward to the musical Friday too. Uh, but that leads us into the last segment for today and for the entire week. And of course, we always look forward to this last segment. It is. Thule over there in Australia. She's one of like uh, the first people to be evangelized over there. She's doing such a great job interviewing people, finding their testimonies. And it's really refreshing to hear these testimonies too of how God has worked in other people's lives, right? So everyone, please welcome Thule as she has another interview. I believe today is with Emma uh, from Australia. Everyone, uh, please welcome Thule with Let's Testify. Hello everybody in Providence. This is Tully from Down Under with another episode of Let's Testify. It's great to be with you today and Let's Testify is a platform where you can share your testimonies about what's happening for you personally through listening to the word and through praying, what's happening to your family, your nation, your church or even in the whole world through your prayers, your action. Um, yes, please testify because through your testimonies, we all receive the Holy Spirit and you also receive the Holy Spirit. So any testimony from three minutes up, that'd be great. You can just reach out to me on the email address in the description below or just send me a comment and I can get back to you that way. So today we have a testimony from Emma, who is a professional dancer, actor and singer. And Emma will give a testimony about overcoming anxiety. So I can... Uh, so let's welcome Emma with her wonderful, passionate testimony. Hi, I'm Emma from Melbourne. And today I'm going to be sharing a testimony about how God helped me with anxiety. So <laughs> when I was evangelized in 2014, I had huge issues with anxiety and I'd had them for many years leading up to that. I still, I'm still managing anxiety now and stuff, but back then it was like a thousand times worse. Like, whoa. Um, <laughs> and anyway, I had to live, I had a certain way that I needed to live my daily life that was like really controlled and very set so that I wouldn't feel as anxious. And it made me feel safe and secure and in control. For example, if I did something particular one day and it was a really good day, then I had to do it again the next day and the next day and the next day in order to feel like it would be a good day. Yeah, and it was pretty intense and I was like very stubborn about how I live my life and like what I did and my routine and stuff like that. Yeah, and it was... It was honestly a miracle that I could be evangelized uh, because things like um, pre-dawn, going to church, the things we do in Providence were very much out of my set routine, like very much out of my set routine. Yeah, but I think because I realized who something it was and what time we were living in quite shockingly, quite clearly, and it was like around the time when the Holy Son was about to leave and it was like rapture is happening you know, it's going to happen anytime. And like my anxiety of not wanting to miss the rapture time pushed me into changing my routine and allowing those things into my life, which is, you know, it's not the ideal motivation to take action, but yeah, I fixed my motivation for doing things later on. But yeah, like it kind of it pushed me to do those things. Yeah, so my anxiety was like super restricting and I felt like I was trapped by it. Like I wanted to do certain things and I, and I wanted to be a certain way, but I, I couldn't because I it felt like I was like kind of trapped in a, in a box or something. Um, so I prayed a lot about it and I wrote letters to something about it, you know, back during that time. And yeah, I prayed, you know, with... Um, like one million dong water about it as well because you know mental health but yeah and when I look back on my journey from then until now little by little God put me in situations where things changed last minute and I had no choice but to go with it 
you know, starting off small, getting bigger, <laughs> especially within Providence, things are changing all the time. And yeah, but also in my life too, like after a few years in Providence, my job situation suddenly changed on me. And I went from like a very stable, predictable job that I was like really comfortable doing to a completely unpredictable situation, which was super tough. So the more I was in a situation where I had to go with the flow and I had to do something different to my plan, the more I started to feel that it was okay when that happened and I came to be somewhat comfortable with it. And each time, like even for small things, I prayed and God always made sure that everything was okay. So the more and more I came to trust that God is looking over everything and leading everything, the the more I was able to trust trust in him and I felt like okay, it's it's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, cuz in order to follow God and like follow his thoughts and the Holy Spirit's inspiration, like sometimes it's just like on the spot and in that moment, you have to be flexible and you have to be open. And sure, you can plan, but you have to be open to them changing those plans and taking you somewhere else Um, because their thoughts and will are so different from human thoughts. So you can't possibly predict how they will inspire you. So if I didn't overcome my anxiety about those things, then I couldn't really live united with God. And I, I felt like... Like, I remember praying, like, oh, like, I feel like I can't be used by you how I might want to be because I, I can't, you know, go with um, <laughs> your inspiration in the moment and stuff like that because of my anxiety. Um, yeah, and my current job in life requires me to be extremely flexible and spontaneous and things are very last minute. And I actually enjoy that element of it now. And without having gone through all those things and healed my mind without God taking me on that journey, then I would never be able to live my current life and do something I really enjoy as my career. Yeah, and recently I was I noticed that I was enjoying things being kind of spontaneous and and I was like I was shocked. I just had this moment of like oh, like what? is this me? Like, I couldn't really recognize myself for a moment because past me would not have coped with, like, <laughs> not coped with this at all. Like, I would have crumbled with anxiety. And I was I was shocked because I just had this moment of being like, wow, I have changed so much. Just Thanksgiving, like, whoa, God, like, changed me this much, you know? He answered my prayer, like, look at how different I am now and I just feel really thankful and also like yeah I obviously I'm still working on it so it gives me like hope that you know I can continue to to change and like be more free from from my way of thinking my anxiety and stuff yeah I'm still working on this aspect of myself every day like not overthinking not worrying but instead trusting and letting go. And it's scary to let go of control because you're holding on to it to feel safe and secure. But the more I realize that God is very much in control, the more I can lean into that to feel safe and um, we can move together. Yeah, and I'm a professional dancer and actor and I just thought of like a little parable as well that I I like that came to me when I was um you know probably I don't know like maybe five years ago or something six years ago when I was struggling with with this you know kind of trusting I thought about like dance partnering so if you as the girl when you're doing dance partnering um if you try to do everything by yourself it doesn't really work but often girls um when we're dancing in partnering work um we have a tendency to to try and do everything by ourselves because if we are off balance like we want to put ourselves back on 
balance and we want to fix it and we want to kind of move ourselves and we it's just the kind of an, the way that we often are <laughs> but actually it's better to just hold yourself strong in the position and if you're going off balance um just stay like strong and then you let you let the guy feel oh she's okay she's off balance and then she, and then he can feel where you are and he can put you back on um that's like if they're holding you you know on one leg or whatever and they can put you back on um yeah and if you yeah if you do that he can feel your weight and he can put you back on balance easily and also the more you let go of controlling everything yourself and you let the guy lead more and you can you work together more like as as one then it works really smoothly yeah so i realized a lot about how to live like um relying on god and trying more to like work as one through thinking about how it works when you're dancing together um as dance partners yeah so that was really helpful for me as well um yeah and yeah so that's my testimony about how God's helped me so far with my anxiety and how I feel so much more free and happy and open in my life compared to the past and I'm really looking forward to how it will continue to get better in the future the more God um, helps me and leads me in this area and just in my life yeah so thank you so much for listening I hope it helped someone who may be having difficulties with anxiety and things like that yeah thanks thank you emma what a great testimony to give us clear insight about praying and acting on the word to overcome mental illness to overcome anxiety and to live a life surfing together with the lord on the winds of the holy spirit in this beautiful history of providence have a great day guys lovely to be with you all i hope you have a wonderful weekend Peace. And thank you so much, uh, Emma and Tuli, for another wonderful uh, segment. I, I hope that we'll be able to listen to even more of these testimonies, moving and inspiring. And if you guys have any comments, go ahead and leave it below for both uh, Tuli and Emma. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for listening for this entire week of the Morning Star Drive. I am having, uh, you know, it's been, we're at like 585, 84 episodes now. And I have... Even in these 584 episodes, I have not lost my fire to do this podcast. I'm going to be honest with you, with the other YouTube channels, sometimes like, oh, I don't want to do this. But this channel, I have never lost fire for this. And I'm always looking forward to uh, doing another episode and just helping people in their everyday life with a radio show that's more fitting for people around the world in Providence. All right. So everyone have a wonderful, awesome weekend. I hope to, go I hope to see you guys soon. And we'll see you guys again on Monday on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You saw me up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone, you know. I'm on the morning star drive, you know. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this.